Hello. Um, just finished watching Max Grant's excellent uh, series of videos on line boring on a lathe and it made me think back to a job I had done back in 2007. Um, back then, I don't even know if I was aware that YouTube existed. And I definitely wasn't posting videos to it. So I didn't take any video of the job, but I did take pictures back then, so I'd have a, a record in case I had to do that type of job again. Um, and so this video is essentially gonna be just a series of pictures showing the job. And it's similar to what Max did, but there's a bit of a twist to it that you may find interesting. Um, anyways, I'll just give you a bit of a background of the problem. This black drawing here is the part, and there was a, uh, f the face here is machined, and there's a uh, hole bored out, and then bolt holes, and then there was a hole here, and a hole here and these holes were worn out and had to be repaired and my customer had welded them up um, but they had no ability to machine them and they approached me to see if I could do it um, this is a kind of a top view of it and the red piece is a fixture that I'll discuss later but the black is the part you can see that each hole was actually made up of two bosses and this part made it with a second part that had bosses that came in between these two and they were bored and then a pin was put through each end to hold them together this part needed to be able to slide back and forth there was a bit of clearance between the bosses so it could move um, but the part definitely didn't want it rattling around so they had a very close sliding fit on the pin which meant that the spacing between those sets of holes had to be uh, very accurate and so that was essentially my task, how to bore those holes to a si an accurate enough size that they could press a hardened bushing because they actually line these with bushings and to get the spacing and parallelism close enough that the pin would go through without binding. So my first uh, thought was, well, I'll, I'll take this and actually turn it 90 degrees from how it's shown here and just bolt it down to my milling machine table and then that would allow me to bore these out um, of course it would be vertically um, and I would, could do that by sending it on this machined face and putting a drawbar through the middle and I tried that and the first couple of pictures show that setup the problem was it was the, like the setup was, was good it was rigid but it was extremely cumbersome to move the boring bars and I had a lower bushing made to support the bar and it just became a, a really slow process. I had a dozen of these to do, so I, I needed to be able to do it quickly. So I came up with a different idea, um, which was essentially what Max did. Let's set these up on the lathe and uh, hold a boring bar in the chuck and the tailstock and line bore them. Um, I had, uh, the, the other idea I had, which I thought was quite good at the time, was let's mount it to the cross slide and then I can bore this hole out and then using the digital readouts on my cross slide, um, move down the right distance and bore those out. And it, it was a great idea and it would guarantee the parallelism and the spacing. But when I checked the travel on my cross slide, Lo and behold, I was about a quarter of an inch short. So I could almost make it between the holes, but not quite. So I was stumped for a couple of days as to what the hell I was gonna do. And then I hit upon an idea of using a rotary table. So that's what this is here. So essentially what I did, um, or the idea of it was, um, you know, mount the rotary table on the cross slide get lined up, bore this out, remove the boring bar, rotate the fixture 180 degrees, bring this set of holes up to here, and then bore it out. And that would be uh, a, a very accurate way to get parallelism and spacing. So that's what I did. And I ended up with a setup that looked kind of like this. So we've got the lathe cross slide. Um, I had a sub plate that I could uh, bolt to the cross slide where the um, 
compound rest would normally go. Then I bolted the rotary table onto that. And then I built a fixture. And I actually still have the fixture. It's right here. Um, you'll notice there's a, a, a tooling ball on it. And on the bottom side, there's a reamed hole. And that hole fits a plug in the center of my rotary table to ensure that the, the axis created by this bore uh, coincides with the vertical axis of rotation of the rotary table. The way it would work is you would put the rotary table, mount that to the lathe, set the rotary table to zero and lock it, put the fixture on with the, the pin through it to make sure it's on the center line of the rotary table. And then this face I had machined square to the axis so you could put a dial indicator on, move the lathe cross slide back and forth until this was zero and then you knew that the axis of this fixture coincided, sorry, was at least parallel with the axis of the lathe. The tooling ball was installed on the axis of this as well. And that allowed me to come in with a dial indicator in the lathe chuck and dial the tooling ball in. And that ensured that I was on the center line this way, that the center line of the fixture was uh, in line with the axis of the lathe. Now, I wasn't dialing up and down because the center height was set by the stack up height, right? I didn't have to dial top and bottom of the tooling ball, just left and right. Um, once I knew that I was positioned, the lathe spindle was right in the center line of this fixture, then I could zero it, and then I could move the cross slide half the distance between the holes, and that's where I had to leave it to bore those holes out. Um, when that was completed, you'd then turn the table 180 degrees and it would bring this series of holes up to the top and without moving the cross slide when you board that out it then positioned these two sets of holes exactly the right distance apart and guaranteed that they were parallel. So that was the setup and um, there was a couple of other things you, you uh, like the, the part here uh, mounted um, actually there was a shoulder in the back that mounted on the face of the fixture and then there was a bolt through with a bar a strap clamp to hold it together that allowed this part to the part when you're setting up could still be out this way around the bore um, so to correct for that um, I put bolts in here and put a parallel across and then dial the top of the parallel and then I had the bolts uh, level I guess you'd say and uh, since these holes were all welded up anyways um, you couldn't really use those as a datum so I just went off the bolts and my customer ended up using these parts afterwards and they they worked fine so you know using the bolts appeared to be a, a good idea um, the reason I had to put a tooling ball in there was because I, I don't have this part, you know, when it was mounted, this was sitting on here and these holes were, were down lower, you know, they're not at the same height. And obviously these holes had to be at the elevation of the lathe center line in order for me to be able to bore them. But this was the datum. There's no way I could dial that in on the lathe. So by putting a tooling ball off center and having it directly in line with where these would be, it allowed me to dial the fixture in and get lined up. So anyways, that's the setup. Um, like I said, I did a dozen parts. Um, at that time, I didn't have a, a lot of experience doing this kind of stuff. And I didn't trust my ability to bore the holes to exactly the right size for a press fit. Um, by moving the tool outwards with a dial indicator. I didn't trust myself to be able to do that accurately enough. 
And so what I did was I had a, a, a reamer that was a little bit bigger than what I needed and I got it ground down to size. And what I did was I would sort of rough these into size with the boring bar, with the line boring bar, and then I would ream them to the final size to fit the, for a press fit for the bushing. And, um, and it worked out. So what I'll show now is just a series of pictures of the setup and I'll probably make it a bit more clear. Like I said, I wish I had video of it, but I didn't take video back in those days 15 years ago. So anyways, thanks for watching.